crack welcome to today's episode my name is david kelly i'm the irish guy vlogs and today i'm in the hench in county clare the last time i was here was to sneak into the irish open but today i'm here to meet a man called cormac mcginley and this is him how are you cormac hey dave so what are we going to be doing today or have you any plans on what we're going to be doing we'll go and we'll take a look at the cliffs of moher nice so we'll nice. start off at the base okay where you should start okay and uh I'll talk you through just how they were formed a bit of the geological history, point out some of the wildlife and that. Yeah, sounds and good. Yeah, go for an old really. stroll around the cliffs and just, yeah, I think that sounds really cool and I suppose whatever else we get up to. So uh, yeah, come along if you want to watch. Or, so yeah, if you want to watch, <laughs> fuck, I can cut this anyway. No, you're so yeah, if you want to come along, join us for the day, see what we get up to, you'll find some uh, adventures in West Clare. So yeah, you ready to go? Yeah. Yep, always. Let's go. Dum -dum -dum -dum. <laughs> So, this is kind of getting to the start for the cliffs. Let's explain the burren and the cliffs. The reason I'd explain the burren first is because the cliff formation lies on top of the burren. They're part of the same kind of story. They were sort of formed at a similar time. So for the burren, this kind of limestone we're setting on, all of this was formed when this part of the Earth's crust was actually slightly south of the equator, okay? So this was 300 and 40, 50 million years ago. So this would have been before Pangaea and all the... Yeah, the, we were all stuck together, kind of going yeah. to Andaland or... Yeah, yeah. And we were slightly south of the equator. This, we were underwater, right, in a shallow tropical sea. And they know it was a shallow tropical sea because they find fossils of corals. Here, these aren't corals, but these are crinoid fossils. See them here, looks like a screw bolt. Oh, yeah. Right, there's loads of them. Right? Heaps of them all over. And so these here grow and live in, well these species did, grew and live in tropical seas, which this clearly isn't at the minute. And as they died, their bodies just went down to the bottom. And you have an accumulation of these dead animal bodies. So limestone, limestone's a different kind of rock, alright? Limestone's made up of dead animals. No other rock is made up of dead animals, alright? <laughs> but limestone is just a giant block of compacted like animal bones and animal shells. So you had about 40 million years of these sea creatures living and dying and their bodies compacting up to form all the limestone that we get in the burren. When you look at the burren, you've got hundreds yeah. of meters of this stuff. So it took a long time for it to happen, right? So into the shallow tropical sea, you would have had a large river system, a really big river system. I reckon about the size of the Mississippi Whoa. flowing into this and then emptying out into the shallow Even sea. Even deltas and deposits and all this stuff. So every time you had a flood in that big river, you get a big layer of sand or mud come down and settle in the bottom and stack up. That rock makes up the cliffs. That's where the cliff is in limestone. The cliff yeah. is made up of sandstone and mudstone, all the layers that this little river left. But it's all underwater. So to get it to be like this, where it's clearly not underwater, it's about 290 million years ago. Maybe 30 million years after the deposits of the cliffs were left down. You had a tectonic impact to the south of here, right? Banging together. Limestone does another thing. Limestone retains heat. So you very rarely get freezing going on on this, yeah, okay. on this limestone rock. Limestone tends to stay four degrees above the... Really? Yeah, in the winter actually, it's why... That's why the cows go and sleep yeah. on the limestone, yeah, actually. Yeah, because yeah. it's like a giant storage heater. Yeah. It heats up all summer, and then in the winter it slowly releases the heat. This looks like the place where they filmed that Father Ted scene. You can quarry tombstones out of them. <laughs> Is that what? Yeah. Was... Someone came and took it. Yeah, a and, and this would have been a quarry. This would have been a working quarry. So they'd quarry those big slabs, limestone slab tombstones you see in the old graves. Yeah. So here, your natural fracture line was running here. So you only had to cut the three sides and oh, break it out. Getcha. Here, it was probably just the right side. So they've taken all the surface limestone off this piece here. Whoa. So you've probably got about, I don't know, four or five tombstones out of that piece. Is that marks in it? Well, this is where the plug and feather would have been. Oh, okay. They I do get the drill the holes down and then they put in uh, these kind of feathers, they call them, like wedges, and then a steel center. And then and a you hammer wedge. it and it splits it. Yeah. So they would have had that the whole way along. It looks like this broke wrong. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Bloody Cranes Bill. Bloody Cranesville. Bloody Cranesville. And then this little yellow one here, this is called Bird's Foot Trefoil. And it's called Bird's Foot Trefoil. Uh, is there anything here? The seed pods, these ones are a bit broke up, but the seed pods can sometimes have 
they look like bird's feet. You get oh, a third okay. one. There's no flower in the barn, as far as I'm aware, right, that's unique to the barn. But what there is, is that you could come across three or four species different flower all in the one pocket right. and botanists will tell you you will not see those three species of flower growing together else. anywhere else in the world so you have what they call assemblages of different species of flowers here that you don't get anywhere else Is a collapse here. You see the bright orange yeah. color on the cliff? Oh, that's, that's recent. That's recent because after about two or three years that will fade back to the color of the rest of the cliff. So when you see it, the brighter the orange, the more recent the chunk has come oh, out. It's the highest point of the cliff. Highest point of the cliffs. Isla Shara from the, the leap of right the up poles. There. So it's from an old legend about two of the diamond. Apparently when modern people came to the diamond, which are the ancient people in Ireland, yeah. hid in caves. And they said that hundreds of years after they hid. I think it was seven of them emerged from the caves, but they emerged as foals. But because they'd been in the cave for so long, when they came out in the daylight, they were blinded by the daylight. And so they panicked and they ran along the cliff edge and they ended up falling to their deaths down here. So that's why this is called the Cliff of the Foals. And they were the remainder of the two who had done it? Supposedly, supposedly, these seven that came out from the caves. So when they were finding the art and the different stuff over here, they were going, oh, these are Celtic people. And you go, well, where? But it seems that that was a culture rather than an actual movement of right, people. Right. We took on aspects of Celtic art, maybe their dress, maybe even their music, right? But it wasn't because a whole heap of Celts just moved here to go. It was because we, whatever people we were, we took on their culture. And when that culture then changed, we ended up being the last people holding on to it. Yeah. So we became more strongly associated with Celtic right, than right. anyone else. So but it turns doing? out the Celtic blood, if you want to class them as natural people, we don't have any Celtic blood. They're a Germanic tribe. Teal and found a spare in the middle of all the, yeah. <laughs> the madness. Ah. So if you've ever had a, a goldfish bowl or a hot tub, do you imagine that the sediment in this river, you've nutrient rich sediment coming down and being laid out into a shallow tropical sea with strong sunlight. So within hours you would have started to get a kind of a scum growing, this algae growing. Right. And you had animals that were moving around feeding on it. So these traces here. So you have these animals moving around, feeding on that there algae. Then you get another flood in the river. Another layer comes down on top and it preserves the traces. So they call these trace fossils. They're basically fossil footprints of animals that lived here 318 million years ago. Do you know what kind of animals? They're not sure. Ones? They're not sure. They're not, they weren't worms. They think they might have been an arthropod, so like a, like a sea slater or oh, okay. possibly a periwinkle relative. They're not sure because there's very few fossils of the actual animal that made the tracks, yeah. right? You've got loads of tracks, but I, as I'm aware, no fossil of the actual animal. I've seen the cliff so many times and to get to see this stuff that I never knew was here is just amazing. I've ever got one. Yeah. That's a fantastic. It's really nice. What kind of lizard is it? Common lizard. The viperous lizard. That's really, really cool. We, would, we definitely would have walked straight past you. One more of that there. I'll get all your lights. No, no, no. Beauty. The moon came over there. Yeah, he's enjoying the heat, obviously, off the rock. Like the ones we were looking at, the trace fossils. Ah, so that's the signature of the yeah, scanner stone? Yeah, of the scanner stone, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, where you have other big slabs, like Luke stone, that doesn't have this in it. They use it for building, but the scanner stone almost always is this. I like this. This one here is wobbly. That's been there for a year, and now that's easy. 
just took me here to show you the mitten. The sea is obviously eaten away back in here. Yeah. 2014, that big storm chewed that out and exposed this. Now this mitten could be anything from a couple of hundred years old to thousands of years old. Oh. It's been a while since people survived in limpets along the coast. Like, so these are all shells that people would have eaten for their dinner at one time, yeah. back thousands of years ago, possibly. Possibly, yeah. It would have been an area, like I say, the dump, where you dumped all your stuff, yeah, the midden. Yeah. So all your stuff got dumped in the midden. So you're okay to take one of those shells? Yeah. I'm going to take this one. The whole cliff will fall down now. <laughs> wasn't so bad for a minute I thought I was going to get bust on the rocks but uh, I'm good. Oh, and if you want to watch the video where I sneak into the Irish Open you can watch it up here. There's uh, some, some candy floss, sea candy floss. So we're finished for the day I think. Did you have a good day? Good Make sure they can hear you. Good for the company. Uh, oh, it was great day. I thought it was really really cool. I think I learned a good bit. Got to see some middens, got to see angles of the cliffs that I've never seen even though I've lived here all my life. Never saw them, I thought that was really cool. Doggy. And the doggy, yeah. Oh, oh Teelan, I forgot to mention Teelan, one of the nicest <laughs> doggies, yeah. And uh, so well trained as well and really, really smart. So yeah, before I go, I just want to mention Cormac's, uh, Cormac's website. So it's Cormac's Coast, is it? Yep, Cormac'sCoast.com. Uh, I'm on I have a Facebook page, it's Cormac's Coast. Instagram, Pinterest. I'll put it, I'll put all the links in the description. <laughs> Honestly, really, you should check it out. If you're looking for bespoke tours, private tours of the cliffs, anything around really. Well, that's it. I take private tours of the cliffs, the burren. I do some seashore exploration walks and some fossil kind of discovery walks as well. Awesome. So there's a few things I, I offer. But if you just like looking at pictures of the cliffs and some of the wildlife we have here on the West Coast, help yourself. Yeah. I had a really, really good day and like, I'd come back again and do it in, in a harpy because there's so much to learn, there's so much to see and it doesn't matter what day you come, you're going to get a different experience every single day, I think. That's the thing about living on the coast, you, you just get the different view every single day. The highlight of today was that lizard. The lizard, oh yeah, I forgot about the lizard. <laughs> you got really excited over that actually, yeah. That's the best, <laughs> the best look I've had at a common lizard in Ireland in the 40 years I've lived here. Really? Yeah. I've got a good look at a dead one, but I have a live one to stay there that long. Yeah, so that was fantastic. That's really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, great day. And honestly, check out Cormac's links in the description because he's a really nice guy and what he does is really, really cool. If you need an awesome tour, Cormac's the man to check out. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye. Bye.